Welcome to the Singapore Management University podcast series, where we feature the latest insights and perspectives from our faculty. With the incidents of corporate fraud on the rise in Singapore and globally, the real-world implications of early fraud detection are too profound to be ignored. To this end, the research of Associate Professor Gary Pan from SMU's School of Accountancy delves into fraud analytics with an emphasis on mining unstructured data, which may include employees' emails, telephone conversations, and many other sources. Simply put, his work involves using digital analysis techniques to look into accounting transactions with the aim of detecting irregular patterns. Associate Professor Pan shares his insights on corporate fraud and why it is vital that businesses tap on the power of unstructured data. Professor, you are one of three contributors in a recent survey on corporate fraud in Singapore, respondents of which included those from top companies listed on the Singapore Exchange. Can you tell us more about the survey and perhaps share with us your views on the pervasiveness of corporate fraud in Singapore? Okay, let me talk about the pervasiveness of corporate fraud in Singapore first. Uh, unfortunately, corporate fraud in Singapore is on the rise. And this is a very interesting phenomenon because uh, in recent years, that the emphasis on corporate governance by companies have definitely gone up. All right? And you realize that companies will implement a lot of internal controls and people put more emphasis on looking at internal control frameworks and so on within companies. Uh, but yet, corporate fraud has gone up. One argument is that perhaps fraud detection techniques have improved and people have focused more on detecting fraud, perhaps using technology. And this phenomenon is again consistent with the survey that we have done uh, with KPMG just last month, that in the new KPMG SMU Singapore Fraud Survey, uh, the report suggests that 29% of the survey respondents experienced fraud incidents within the company uh, over the two years. And this is up from the 22% 2011 survey. All right, so giving you a bit of background about the survey, we asked slightly over 100 companies in Singapore, and that includes uh, both MNCs and also SMEs. And we asked them areas like whether there are any fraud incidents in recent years, um, exactly what they have done, and so on. Interestingly, in the same survey, 10% of the respondents highlighted that fraud incidents were first detected by data analytics investigation procedures. And this is a very interesting finding because compared to the 2011 survey, only 3% of fraud incidents were detected by external and internal audit. And yet, right now, there are 10% of the fraud incidents are detected by using fraud analytics technologies. I guess the overall conclusion or the findings do suggest that with the prevalence of data analytics, you're going to find that companies would want to employ more technological solutions to identify fraud going forward. Now, undoubtedly, data analytics is becoming more important to businesses in different ways. How does data analytics play a role in fraud detection? All right. So essentially, what it does is to analyze data. So you have companies gathering data, storing data, and then analyzing data using data mining techniques, looking at discrepancies, patterns, and anomalies and then try to make sense of all these different patterns and anomalies. And all these findings and all this making sense of the data would definitely help in terms of fraud investigation. And that's essentially what it does. And this contrasts with the traditional way of corporate fraud detection because traditionally, we tend to rely heavily on uh, the manual skills of the fraud investigation team, perhaps based on their experience, based on their instinct, and then their persistence in looking at various data that are available and try to link them to the fraudulent activity. However, that's perhaps is going to be harder and harder because of the big data phenomenon. So exactly what big data means is that you're going to find that data these days have increased many times or tremendously in terms of the volume, in terms of the velocity, and in terms of the variety. All right? and, and this increases almost on a daily basis. And in fact, in one study, it was mentioned that 90% of the world data have only come about in the last two years. So you're going to find that just based on manually, it's going to be very difficult. And that's the reason why uh, a lot of the fraud detection these days involve technology-centric and relying on advanced 
fraud analytics technologies. Since you mentioned big data, let's talk more about that. How can big data impact fraud analytics? One area that certainly is on top of everybody's mind is that do I want to allocate resources to analyze unstructured data on top of the structured data? So perhaps let me explain a little bit about what is structured data and what is unstructured data. So traditionally in fraud detection, people tend to focus on structured data. Right? And by structured data, I mean source data that is stored in a structured form, meaning your two by two data tables that you see a lot in your Excel spreadsheets and so on. And then we use structured query language to try to analyze the data. But unfortunately, it is reported that if you do that, you're only analyzing 20% of the corporate data. In fact, there are about 80% of the corporate data out there that no analysis is being done at the moment. All right, so, so that's what we mean by the unstructured data. All right, so what we mean by unstructured data, in fact, is that it includes things like employees' emails, uh, audio clips, video clips, and many other data that do not form into this two by two structured format. Then the decision is, do you want to analyze beyond just the structured data? So of course, a more effective fraud analytical strategy is to integrate available structured and unstructured data and then perform fraud data visualization, for example, statistical analysis, for example, and even text mining, for example. And this will certainly help to improve the detection effectiveness rate. But having said that, it really depends on whether companies have the resources to do that and whether they have the uh, available data to do that. It's interesting that you mentioned about employees' emails, phone conversations and things like that being termed under unstructured data. How do accountants use these so-called unstructured data in fraud detection? Can you give us some examples? One example could be in the area of tax analytics. For example, you can do a keyword search of all this tax data. So for example, you can look at suspicious payment activities. For example, in the accounts payable, or in the cash disbursement journals. And you can look out for keywords such as respect payment, friend fee, help fee, or problem resolution, or any other keywords that may indicate risk areas where fraud intent may be present. Also, in the context of a bank, the bank can also analyze a customer's current account, mortgages, well management, data, and so on. And, and these are all generally considered your structured data. And integrate that with the spending habits, the lifestyles of the same customer that perhaps you can analyze uh, on blogs and discussion forums which belong to the unstructured data and to sort of assess the customer's credit worthiness and then make an analysis to assess the likelihood of whether the customer would commit fraud or not. All right, And this would definitely improve the existing credit rating method. Um, other examples could also include things like uh, if you were to analyze uh, conversations or emails and you realize that the, there could be a possibility of detecting collusion between your employees and perhaps either between colleagues or with external people because unstructured data may reveal mismatches between the language that people use when they are communicating confidentially to their colleagues uh, versus when they are communicating with um, external parties in processing external transactions. So in that sense, the analysis of unstructured data is much more nuanced in the interpretation of language than is possible in the case of structured data. So what are the major challenges that companies face when conducting fraud analytics for detection purposes? As it is, not many companies have utilised uh, advanced fraud data analytics tools. This is supported by recent EY's Global Forensic Data Analytics Survey that suggests that only 7% of the survey respondents are aware of any specific big data technologies and that only 2% are leveraging big data processing capabilities in their forensic data analytics program. And I suppose one major challenge is that do they want to analyze beyond structured data? Because by doing so, you're going to require a lot of resources pumped in by the company. And besides that, you're going to find that there are two major issues. For example, the inadequate awareness among companies and also lack of expertise in fraud analytics. 
So let me first talk about the inadequate awareness among companies. All right. Uh, one reason it could be that companies have a false sense of security uh, towards their risk exposure to fraud. This is possible. Uh, because companies may not evaluate their internal controls regularly. So they may have put in their internal control framework, they may have put in uh, various internal control plans, but they may not have reviewed them on a regular basis. And as such, they may tend to overlook or underestimate the sophistication of new fraud schemes and concealment methods uh, by the fraudsters. So that's one. The other reason is that a lot of these companies are not familiar with the big data fraud analytical tools that are available in the market. So as such, they do not know what they are missing. The other area is related to the lack of expertise in fraud analytics among businesses in Singapore. All right. um, traditional audit and IT skills uh, may not incorporate the more advanced data mining skill sets required for performing fraud analytics techniques. All right? And you literally need someone who knows database management uh, knowledge. You need someone who knows accounting knowledge. And you also need someone who is familiar with anti-fraud techniques and so on. So it's unsurprising that it's difficult to have someone who has all this various skill sets. Right. Uh, furthermore, it might be very useful for companies to also incorporate fraud risk analytics culture within the business. All right. uh, you may have the expertise, for example, but you may lack the culture to gather uh, useful data to make sense of all this data that you may have within the company. So having that culture within the company, it would go a long way in establishing an effective fraud monitoring and detection program. This has been an insightful interview into the world of data and fraud analytics. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you.